Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. In a few minutes, we're going to be talking about the memory, which is going to be powering the RTX 50 series of graphics cards, as well as most likely RDNA 5. That would, of course, be GDDR7. There has been some official confirmation of not only what speeds this memory will achieve, but also capacity and some other things as well. But I want to kickstart this video, actually, with a bit of a mystery. So put your Sherlock hat on. On because, uh, or shall I say Sherlock Holmes hat, because we're going to be talking about Soundwave. Now, this has been discovered by Gamma Zero Burst. I will leave a link to their website, of course, in the video description, along with WCCF Tech, because they actually were the ones where I initially saw this uh, article pop up. But this is a free NM project. Now, from what I can ascertain, um, basically Gamma Zero Burst, I'm just going to call them Gamma for the rest of this video so we don't go crazy uh have basically been trawling through things like linkedin and other means to kind of get information as well employees sometimes they don't do the best job of being secretive of projects they're working with now in this particular case we only have a code name so you can see that there are other code names that you're probably familiar with for example strix and sarlacc and of course we do know that those are well APUs and in this case we've talked about them extensively on the channel before and they are based on RDNA 3.5 and Zen 5 with the number of CPU cores the cache as well as of course the number of workgroup processors um, differing between the different projects but what isn't really known about is Soundwave now they state that it is a free NM project but other than that we don't really know anything about it likely it is of course an apu simply because of the context here but i spoke to several of my sources and no one has heard anything about this i'm going to be very honest with you guys i'll continue to reach out because a couple of people haven't gotten back to me yet with that said uh, wccf tech are speculating that this is probably based on well zen 6 now, to my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, but there are no APUs which are utilizing RDNA 4. It seems that RDNA 3.5 is going to be for APUs, RDNA 4 is going to be for discrete. Um, and of course, we've spoken about those quite extensively. So possibly this is something along the lines of Zen 6 and RDNA 5, but that is speculation on my part. I honestly do not know. So I'm just going to leave this as a placeholder. Um, I want to put it on your radar, and then maybe we can try and figure out what the hell this actually is going forward. I have spoken, as I said, to a couple of people, and well, I basically got absolutely nothing. One person figured it may be a console APU, but I really don't think that that is true. And the best I could figure is that uh, I'm coming to the same conclusions as WCCF Tech, and that is it's probably an APU which is going to be designed for, let's say, laptops or that type of thing. It's also worth noting, and I'm just going to put this in last second, that when it comes to um, project names, AMD can be kind of secretive, and that's putting it very mildly. So maybe we know of this project, but it's called something else or whatever. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see what happens. Okay, now we're going to be hopping over to 3dcenter.org because we have now official confirmation from JDEC as to the specification of GDDR7. Um, 3dcenter.org are a German website, but with the power of Google Translate, we can get a pretty good understanding of what the article says. Now, we also have... Um, in the past seen a roadmap and this was officially released by micron and you can see it on screen basically it provides insight into several different memory standards we have things like hbm here of different types so hbm3 uh, for example hbm4 and of course the aforementioned gddr7 now what's quite interesting here is that we are basically in the potential um, for not only massively faster memory speeds, um, which is obviously really good, um, this could basically mean that theoretically we could have memory which is going to be running at massively faster speeds. And this isn't really surprising. We, I think there was like a month ago we saw a report actually of uh, Samsung's GDDR7 hitting something like 37 Gbps, which is about 50% faster than R6X is capable of. But anyway, perhaps 
more interestingly here is we also learn the density per device has gone up significantly. You can see on screen, I'm not going to read out all of these values because, well, you can see them on screen, but 16 GB, 24 GB, 32 GB, and so forth. Now, what this basically means is that, um, well, there could be some really interesting situations if we were to go with a narrower memory bus. So, for example, 128-bit, which would, of course, be for memory chips, we could have absolutely absurd amounts of memory. Um, and, again, this could mean that we have, well... I suppose the best way of describing it actually would be crooked memory. So this could mean that we have three gigabyte memory chips or 24 GB if you prefer. Um, and this of course means that uh, we could have absolutely crazy amounts of memory. Um, even if you're not doing uh, clamshell modes, you can have something like 48 gigabytes of VRAM on a 384-bit bus. And of course, that could be doubled, again, if you have um, a clamshell uh, being used. And what's absolutely nuts about this is the memory standard, technically, although it is a placeholder, um, actually goes up to 8 gigabytes per memory chip so obviously that would mean graphics cards with an absolutely absurd amount of memory however this is not something that we're going to be seeing uh, being taken advantage of tomorrow or anything like that as for the industry we have official statements from a plethora of companies everyone that you would expect nvidia for example put out a statement and they said nvidia is excited that our work with jdec has helped make ram signaling the foundation technologies for gddr7 helping customers to get the most performance out of their gpu amd have also stated the groundbreaking gddr7 memory standard unveiled today represents a pivotal step towards unlocking the next generation of customer gaming commercial enterprise devices by harnessing the transformative power of gddr7s we can collectively unlock a new era of transformational compute and graphics possibilities paving the way for a future shaped with innovation and discovery end quote and well, that's a certainly a lot of uh, uh well marketing spiel but it is very exciting and as i said to you earlier most likely uh, GDDR7 is going to be present at pretty much all of the Blackwell graphics cards to my understanding so everything from the lowest end devices for example the RTX 5060 all the way up to the 5090s are going to use some variant of configuration of GDDR7 so yeah um, we can be really excited with 96 bit or more likely in some very low end cards 50, uh, 64 bit memory buses isn't that going to be exciting everyone with that said, take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.